The sages said, O oh Lord, please tell us in detail all these rites, the fire sacrifice, the sacrifice to gods, Brahma Yajna, the worship of the preceptor and the gratification of Brahmanas. Sutta said, the offering made into the fire is called Agni Yajna, fire sacrifice. In the case of persons in the Brahmachari ashram, religious students, it is called Samida Dan, collection of sacrificial twigs. O Brahmanas, until the rite of Aupasana, fire sacrifice of the householder, all the persons in the Brahmachari ashram perform their vratas and special sacrifices in the fire from sacrificial twigs. O Brahmanas, in the case of ascetics and forest dwellers who have consigned the sacred fire to the Atman, taking a restricted quantity of wholesome food is itself the sacrificial offering. Householders who have started their Aupasana rite shall maintain the sacrificial fire in a duni, vessel or pit, always. The sacrificial fire shall be maintained either in the Atman or in the Arani, the sacrificial churning twig from which fire is kindled, lest the fire should be extinguished by royal or divine intercession. O Brahmanas, the morning offering for the sun god is conducive to longevity. The evening fire offering for the fire god is the bestower of prosperity. This is called Agni Yajna, inasmuch as it enters the sun during the day. The different sacrifices, stali, paka, etc., for the propitiation of Indra and other gods by offerings in the fire are called Deva Yajna. The rites of Chaula, ceremonial tanshur, etc., are performed with the ordinary fire. The regular study of the Vedas is called Brahma Yajna. A Brahmana shall perform Brahma Yajna constantly for the propitiation of the gods. This is to be practiced by all, hence, no special rules are prescribed. Now attend to the explanation of certain Deva Yajnas without fire. At the beginning of the first creation, the omniscient, merciful Lord Mahadev created the days of the week for the benefit of the entire world. Lord Mahadev, the global physician, the omniscient, the panacea of all panaceas, made the first day, Monday, his own day that bestows good health. Next, he created the day of his Maya, the bestower of prosperity. Afterwards, when the birth of Kumara was attended with some mishaps, he created Wednesday for the sake of surmounting mishaps and idleness. With a desire to bless the worlds for their nurture and protection, he created Thursday dedicated to Vishnu, protector of the worlds. The next day created by the Lord for the sake of the longevity of the worlds is dedicated to the creator of the three worlds, Brahma, called also Parameshtin, the bestower of longevity. Hence, this day too bestows longevity. The last two days of the week created by the Lord are those of Indra and Yama. In the beginning, when the Lord created Punya and Papa, virtue and sin, for making the three worlds flourish, the deities who preside over them were assigned these two days. The last two days are the bestowers of worldly enjoyments and removers of premature death, respectively. The Lord made the Son, who is his own manifestation, and firmly established the lords of the different days in Jyotish Chakra, the solar cycle. 
Worshipping them in their respective days accords the respective benefits, health, riches, removal of sickness, nourishment, longevity, enjoyment of pleasures, and prevention of death, respectively. Thus it is said that the respective merits of the different days are secured through the gratification of the appropriate gods. Shiva is the ultimate bestower of the fruits accruing from the worship of other gods as well. The worship for the propitiation of the deities is fivefold. 1. Repeated recitation of the respective mantras. 2. Sacrifices. 3. Charitable gifts. 4. Austerities. and 5. Propitiation on the altar, idol, fire, or a brahmana. The sixteen forms of service and homage discussed earlier shall be duly observed. Of the fivefold forms of worship, the latter are more efficacious than the former. In the absence of the earlier ones, the latter ones can be observed. In ailments of the eyes or head, or for quelling leprosy, the sun shall be worshipped and the brahmanas fed for a day, a month, a year, or three years. If the action, meritorious or otherwise, that has begun to fructify is sufficiently strong, the ailment, old age, etc., are alleviated. The repetition of the mantras of the favorite deity accords the respective benefits of the day of the week. The first day of the week, dedicated to the sun, has the special merit of the removal of sin, especially for brahmanas. For the sake of riches, the intelligent devotee shall worship Lakshmi, etc., on Monday, with cooked rice soaked in ghee, and shall feed the brahmana couples. For alleviating ailments, the devotee shall worship Kali and others on Tuesday. He shall feed brahmanas with an adhika, a measure of cooked rice, pulses, black gram and green gram. The scholarly devotee shall worship Vishnu with curd rice on Wednesday. Sons, friends, womenfolk, etc. will always be well nourished forever. A person who seeks longevity shall worship the deities with sacred thread, cloth, milk and ghee for their gratification on Thursday. On Friday, for the sake of enjoyment of worldly pleasures, the devotee shall worship devas with concentration. Brahmanas should be propitiated with cooked food consisting of six flavors, astringent, sweet, bitter, pungent, sour, and salty. Good cloth should be presented to women to gladden them. The wise devotee shall worship Rudra and others on Saturday that wards off premature death by performing homa with sesame seeds. He shall make gifts to the brahmanas and feed them with cooked rice and sesame seeds. Thus worshipping the deities, he shall derive the fruit of good health, etc. In the daily or special sacrifices of the deities, ceremonial ablutions, charitable gifts, repetition of mantras, sacrifices, propitiation of brahmanas, in the worship of the different devas in view of special dates or conjunctions of the planets, or in the different days of the week. It is the omniscient Lord of the universe who bestows health and other benefits by assuming their different forms. He bestows the same according to the time, place, and the karmic qualifications of the recipient. The articles for worship shall be in accordance with one's faith or local conventions. The Lord bestows health, etc., in accordance with the comparative quality of the same. In the beginning of the period of auspiciousness, the end of the period of inauspiciousness, on birthdays, etc., the householder shall worship the planets, sun, etc., in his own house for his good health, etc. Hence, the worship of gods bestows all desired fruits. The worship conducted by brahmanas must be done with mantras and by means of mudras in the case of others. 
The worship shall be carried out by men seeking good benefits on all the seven days in accordance with their capacity. Indigent men shall worship devas with austerities and rich men by spending money. They shall do virtuous actions with sufficient faith again and again. After enjoying pleasures in heaven, they are reborn again in the world. For better enjoyment, the rich shall always plant trees for shade, dig tanks, etc., install and worship deities, and carry on virtuous activities. After the lapse of some time, when the virtue becomes ripe, he shall achieve perfect knowledge. O Brahmanas, he who hears this chapter, or reads it, or facilitates the hearing of the same, shall derive the same fruit as Deva Yajna.